This is a medieval house you can be proud of, and I'm gonna show you how to make it block by block. And I promise you, it's a lot easier than it looks. It's time I built you a decent house. So how do you fancy something medieval with a tower and some different roofs and some nice texture and all that kind of stuff? Well, that's what you're getting. But we're not gonna time lapse this one. I'm actually gonna build it with you block by block. That way you can keep the shape and style of the house, but you can change the palette up to use whatever blocks you would like. Alternatively, you could use these blocks because I think they really work. And it's gonna be a lot easier for you to follow if I do it in a flat world. So here's a flat world, let's go. To make a house like this, these are the blocks that you're gonna wanna be using. Now the quantities are gonna change up depending on how you do it. But essentially you've got a bit of stone, you've got a bit of wood, you've got some bricks and you've got the stuff that goes inside. Take a screenshot of that to get your palette, let's crack on with it. This is gonna be the footprint of your medieval house. The big yellow square there is 13 by 13 blocks wide. We've got a light blue square that is nine by nine blocks. The red rectangle rectangle on the right hand side is four by nine but with the corners just nicked off and that white rectangle down at the bottom is seven squares by five squares you've also got a little bit more of that blue poking out that is one by nine and the first thing I'm going to do is change up all of the internal floor to stone but I'm also going to put in a few different accents things like andesite and the odd stone brick just like that so I'll be back when I finish that so it looks like that but you notice I've not gone around the outer edge because we're going to put some walls on there it'd be pointless to texture under underneath the walls. And then I'm gonna go all the way around the outside with what is mainly stone brick. Not completely stone brick, but mainly. I'm gonna intersperse it with a few other blocks, a little bit like I have done the floor. But I'm gonna leave some gaps for a few windows. I'll be back when I've done that. So the walls are currently too high. This being the front of the house, coming slightly round to the right, I've got a one wide window there, a one wide window there. I've got no windows across this wall. I've got a window either side of a doorway on this side. I've got three windows across the back here. I've got three windows across the back here. I've got two windows to the side here and no windows on this side. The walls are now four blocks high and all the windows are two blocks high. And the doorway has an upside down step just above it. I've then placed cobblestone randomly across the entire building. And I've also placed andesite and stone randomly, but only in the top two levels, which gives a slight feeling of progression that we've got a little bit more heavy stone at the bottom and the lighter stone at the top. We're then gonna build up on all of the corners that I've marked out here in brown, a four high tower of stripped oak wood. And on the second one, I'm gonna replace it with a composter just like this. And then I'm gonna surround all the bottom blocks of these pillars with trap doors like this. I'm using spruce trap doors. You could use others, but I like spruce because it's completely solid and you can't see through it. So it looks like that. On this side elevation though, I've not put trap doors on the insides of those pillars. And I'm gonna to have to close in these two windows around these two sides of the pillars because it's not gonna work. That's better. Then using oak steps, I'm gonna put in some window sills. So one underneath there, one underneath there. And I've got a gap there that's ugly. So I'm gonna place in a slab just to cover that up. I'm gonna do the same all the way around the other windows. So the back looks like that, the side looks like that, but I haven't done anything on this end because we're gonna change this up a little bit. I'm gonna take that out and I'm gonna replace the one above it with that upside down step. We're then gonna place a block in there and also a block in there. And then we're gonna pop a block in there as well. That's because I'm gonna fill this up with planks to make a kind of a veranda area. And the door needs to be raised one level. And that's okay because inside, that's gonna have a slightly higher level to this room that will then go down to a lower level as we go further down. Here, I'm gonna place a slab right there. And on the opposite end, I'm also gonna place a slab. And that's why we left this area free. I can then place my windowsill underneath that one high window there and that one high window there. And rather than put glass in these windows, I'm actually gonna put in some acacia trap doors because you put in one in the top and then one in the bottom and then flat them. They create quite a nice slatted window. I'm gonna do that with all of the windows. This one, we're just gonna place the slab like that and then around the back again, double it up one there, one there and flap it. We're also then gonna put the doors in by coming on the inside and placing the door on the inside like that. So when you come out, we've got a nice depth to it. Now inside this door is one row up and that's no good. So we're gonna do exactly what we did before. We're gonna create a floor that is mostly stone and it's gonna to come to this level here. So it's only gonna be four wide and all the way across. So it looks like that. I've placed some stone steps to come down to the next level. I'm gonna to start to structure the roof now. Deep slate brick stair goes right on that post on the top block and then mud brick outside of it upside down mud brick there and then keep coming across until you hit the middle you're going to do exactly the same on the other side here deep slate brick stair just there 
we're gonna put mud brick stairs there and the upside down till we reach the middle. Once we've got a single block gap between these stairs, I'm placing mud bricks on that. I'm gonna place mud brick stairs facing backwards and outwards like that, and then upside down another set of steps. So we've got this pop out, giving a little bit more interesting shape. We're then gonna bring these deep slate brick stairs all the way across until they hit the wall right there. It should be just above the window. And then we're gonna carry on doing the same thing all the way to the top on both sides. At the top, we're gonna to fill the channel with deep slate brick, just like that, and then we're gonna get deep slate brick slab, and we're gonna place one, two, and three across the top, so we've got a slight incline on the front of that roof. We can then texture this roof to make it look just a little bit interesting by putting in some solid blocks, whether that is standard deep slate brick like that, you could put in some cobbled deep slate perhaps, just like that, that makes it look quite nice. You could even put in some cracked deep slate brick, that looks pretty good. You could put in some chiseled deep slate, that looks nice. And also, if you really wanted to, some polished deep slate just to make it a little bit different. All of those work really, really well. Just go for your life. So the texture I've chosen looks like that. We've done the same on the end with the patio as well, except this time we've come up three sets of steps and then gone up a full block, then across steps, up a full block, across, up a full block before we top it off. And it gives that more pointy feeling. It also means that this roof is increased above the height of this roof and it makes it a lot easier for this roof to just slot into it. We're then gonna build in the plan of where our tower is gonna to be. So on this pillar here, I'm gonna come up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now, not all of those are gonna stay pillar. Some of those are temporary, but it's good to get the structure in. And then on this block here, which is along the edge of this wall and the first turn in, we're gonna build it up to the same height as well, which is a further one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 blocks. You can see there we're at the same height. We're gonna place another stripped oak slab right there then we're going to get a temporary slab and place it there and then another slab right there remove the temporary slab we're going to get trapdoor i like to use spruce but you could use any other one we're going to place one there one there and one there it's a good idea to change that up for a solid block rather than a step because it connects much more nicely then come around this side and we're going to place one there shift click there shift click there and shift click there as well that will meet up with the wall in just a moment on top of that we're going to place a brick and on top of that we're going to place another stripped oak like that we're then going to build ourselves a wall using brick and packed mud and also granite that comes across which means that we're going to sweep out this last section right here and on this side we're going to do the same again so we've got to come up one then we're going to get a temporary slab there and a permanent slab there. We're gonna come across with trap doors there, there, and also there. I'm gonna replace that block there with a solid block and then come in one, two, and three this time because that will come up to that block there. We can then place a brick there and also strip there. So you should have a brick-shaped horseshoe that looks a little bit like this with granite and packed mud interspersed between those bricks. We're then gonna increase the height of this corner by one, two, three more blocks, miss a gap of two, and then come up one, two, three. And on this side, oh, we can get the third one on there, bang it on. On this side, miss one, two, and then come one, two, and three like that. We can then build up the rest of this wall all the way around to make sure that we've got bricks with a load of granite and packed mud in it as well. So it should look like that. And now we've got that structure in, we can duplicate this gable onto this end. And to get the positioning right, come between these two posts here and place your deep slate brick stairs right there. You can then place your mud brick steps there and they can then be towered up as before. And the same on this side, place your deep slate brick step right underneath that last trap door there and then your mud brick stairs go on this side. So it should look like that. You can then extend that brick wall to meet that roof and then pop out those two blocks there to create yourself a window. And we can then extend these strip oak all the way to the top so as they meet the wall. We're then gonna place upside down oak stairs underneath these windows as window sills and the same one over here as well. And just like the ones on the bottom floor, we're gonna use these acacia trap doors to create some windows. Now on this one, we've got double and that looks great too. See, works perfectly. We're then gonna raise this stone wall under here by one block, and we're gonna raise this stone wall by five blocks. So it looks like that. We're then gonna increase the level of this strict oak wood by one, and we're gonna put a pop out moving forwards. We're gonna do the same on this other side, increase it by one, put a pop out moving forwards. And this is gonna be where we create the gable for the front of the house. However, before we do that, I'm gonna place an upside down step there, an upside down step there, and then a slab there and a slab there to give that kind of effect. And I'm gonna increase the height of this wall using calcite by another six blocks. 
one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it's one above the block there. And I'm gonna turn this into a five by five square all the way through. Even though it kind of hangs over the top, it's a little bit weird. We're gonna sort that out in just a moment. I'm gonna make this the same height all the way up. We can then extend this gable ever so slightly out because we've got a one block gap there. Then right in the center, we're gonna come up one, two blocks and then punch a hole out in the next two like that. And we can do exactly the same on the front facing wall, two from the top right in the middle, that's just like that. And similarly on this side as well. We're gonna leave that side blank. We can now do the front gable on this big long wall. Because it's so long, we need to change the way we do it a little bit. If we just follow 12, 12 or an extended gable like that, it's gonna look really weird because it will be way too tall. So we're gonna use what I call the block and slab technique. I'm gonna place a slab there and a slab on top of it. So it's like a whole block, but it's offset by half. We're then gonna get a full block and place it there. We're gonna place a slab on top of the top half of that full block and then on top there. Then we're gonna get another slab place it there and there you can see we're kind of offsetting halfway as we go this now is a whole block or the equivalent of so we're going to come up up one and two and then the next one will be like a whole block we place it against that edge there you can see we've got a whole block moving i'm now then going to turn this into whole block so we're going to slightly change the angle of the roof and then i'm going to do it again once more i'm then going to repeat it on the other side and make sure i meet right in the middle so it should look like that you've got that gradual curve to the gable end then what we can do is take our deep slate brick slabs and bring them across all the way to the wall it should be just underneath the window there and the same with the top half along so it's half a brick below that window like that then get a full block bring it all the way across right the way to the wall and then carry that on until you've done the entirety of the roof Come around the back of your house, bring these both up another one level, get yourself your oak slab, temporary and then permanent. Come on this side, temporary and then permanent. Get rid of those and you're gonna bring these up another five. One, two, three, four and five. And on this side as well, one, two, three, four and five. You can then put a pop out on each of these sides just like the other one forwards like that and you can build up the roof in exactly the same way as you have done here. So grab yourself a full block on top of that, get yourself a slab there and a slab there, slab there, slab there, full block like that and so on. What I'm also going to do is bring this gable forwards one, so I'm going to get rid of that, I'm going to place that there and then I'm going to replace that with that there and then we can carry on with the climb one block forwards. What that will mean is this roof won't bash into the mud bricks, it will bash into the deep state which is what we want. Apologies, my bad slight miscalculation there and then build your roof across so as it looks like that. We're then gonna use white concrete and we're gonna trim around one block all the way along the top of this bricked edge, all the way to this side as well and across the other side. But what we're gonna do on top of it is we're gonna come in with some slabs. I'm using oak slabs. And we're gonna oak slab all the way across like this just to create a, a transition between the bricks and also that concrete and every one, two, three, four. I'm going to place a correct way round step. Four, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three on that side to give that sort of pattern. And then in the middle, I'm going to remove that slab. I'm going to put an upside down slab so we get that indentation like that, and there, and there, and also there. So you should end up with that sort of pattern across your transition. We're then gonna build this entire wall back up with concrete. We will be punching out some windows in a moment, but for now, let's just keep it simple for ourselves and put the concrete in. Make sure you knock out the bottom slabs there, otherwise you won't be able to fit those concrete in. So right now, it looks like that. Come around the back and against this slab here, place a trap door going against the bottom upright here. And then on this side, go one and then shift click two and three. Repeat that on this side, so one, two and three with another one coming on that side as well, going against that roof again. Make that a solid block so as it connects up really nicely. And you're gonna use this as a guide to make another small gable end across these windows. And the way we're gonna do it is quite simple. Shift click a solid block against the edge of this trap door just like that, and another one against the edge of that trap door just like that. We are then gonna build up a 12-12 gable coming upwards and then also one extra one coming underneath. So temporary block there and that will go like that. We can then put that upside down, upside down block there 
and one like that. That is gonna be the 12-12 right there. So next up, that's gonna be another, imagine that going there, and that's gonna go like that. Imagine that going there, and that is gonna go up like that, and we can create our gable in exactly that way. So it should look like that. And then we can build in our brick wall in exactly the same way as we did on the other side, going from the top of the inner pillar there, coming in until we hit the edge of the gable, which is only two blocks on that side. Come in just two blocks there, so as you hit that wall, and then create a similar wall here as you did here. And once you've done that, you can fill it up with white concrete, just like on the other side. And it should come out looking like that. We're then gonna fill in these gable ends with birch planks. I know, right, I actually said birch. I don't know who I am anymore, but it actually doesn't look too bad. And once you've got that wall of birch in there, make sure you underpin with some deep slate stone stairs just here, just to make sure that it does kind of hold it in place. Otherwise, what you've got here is really, really square looking, and that's not so nice. And make sure as you're doing it, you are filling in all of those blank holes. Otherwise, you can end up with bits of wall that don't belong there. That can go there, that can go there. And then underneath again, I'm going to underpin like that. And I'm going to complete this up so as we've got birch on the inside of every gable. And on these little end gables here, I'm just going to underpin with a slab right there. Otherwise, the brick's showing through. Before you block in this corner here, the one where your pillars are touching, I just recommend you pop a torch on the inside just to put some light in there. Otherwise you could end up having a mob spawn and that will at best be really annoying with the noise or at worst, you'll break it, they'll see you and it'll be a creeper and it explodes your house and that's bad. And once you've got all of your walls filled in, come along to the roofs and close them all up. So join this fella up to there, all the way along like that. And then similarly, this guy can come along and close up right there as well and do it across the entire house. But before you do, make sure you just lob down a few torches inside so you don't get any mobs spawning. So your house should now look something like this. It's got a decent bit of form, but it's still not quite there, but we're gonna fix that. We're gonna build this tower up now. So we're gonna come to the corner on this side and we're gonna dig out those two and we're gonna place ourselves a temporary block there and we're gonna build up one, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna come up one above. We're gonna build that up two. We're gonna build that up too, and then we're gonna do exactly the same here. We have to come inside, temporary block there, one, two, three, four, and five. So we've built that up with the tower exactly like that. We're then gonna come in sideways. We're gonna place that there, that's temporary. So we can get rid of it, that there, that's temporary, that there, get rid of those, and do the same on all sides, like this. Get rid of that one and that one. We're gonna place in a solid block there and a solid block there solid block there and a solid block there on all four sides. And once you're there, that's quite square and we'd like it to be just a little bit more round. So on that solid block, the middle one and that solid block, place some slabs, same on that side, same on that side and same on that side. So you create yourself kind of a Minecraft circle, which are not really circles, are they? And then we're gonna build ourselves a roof that matches the rest of the style. And to do that, we're gonna place mud bricks on all the outer sides here. So come along those three, and then that little three corner area there. Come along those three, that three corner area. Come along those three, that three corner area. Come along those three, and that three corner area like that. You're then gonna get your mud brick slabs, and on the bottom edge of these, you are gonna place a slab all the way around like this. So it looks like that. We're then gonna grab our deep slate and we're gonna bring it in across here on each of those three like that and in the corners so as we've got a base upon which to work. We're then gonna bring it up one level with a whole block of these deep slate bricks like that. Then we're gonna come in in the corners there and we're gonna bring up the level of the deep slate bricks into the corners like that. Bring it in there, 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 and there. Now we need to be cautious because we're starting to build a square. We want it to be slightly less square than that. So we want to bring in an inner square for that shape. And then we're going to build a diamond shape all the way around like this to stop it looking too square. We're then going to bring it in like that. Continue that diamond, come in there, and pop another one up. So you can see we've kind of got that spired pillar look. Now you can increase the size of the pillar if you want by increasing the blocks on that side there and then increasing the blocks here, turning that into a square, bringing it all the way around so as it's more of a square like that. Create another diamond like that 
and then come up like that so you've got a much taller roof it really depends on what it is you prefer but that looks very very pokey so we now need to start to bring in a little bit more detail so i'm going to bring in some steps just to soften the edges across here on each of these flat sides like that i'm going to bring in some slabs on the sides of those on all four i'm going to bring a slab there and a slab there 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 and there now what i might do is i might even replace that with some stairs so as it softens it a little more and this is where you just kind of play with what it is you want you can do whatever you'd like just to create the shape that you're after i've gone for a shape like that which i'm really quite happy with it's not too spiky but it's a bit taller than a standard triangle so that works for me i'm then going to come up to the top and on this top block here i'm going to place a barrel facing upwards so i've just got a bit of a variation in color on top of that barrel using shift click i'm going to place a wall and i'm then going to come with a spruce fence one two and three later on i'm going to stick a flag on that i then need to separate this birch here from this stone because that is way too coarse a transition and i'm going to use oak and i'm using oak because it is a slightly darker color to that birch and it works really well plus i've used oak everywhere else and it makes sense so bring those all the way across i'm going to do that on every gable end and on this end with the terrace i've lifted the stone one block higher just to accommodate that door because remember that one is higher than the rest of them we can then start to place in some windows in this gable end i think all of them could do with a window at least a small one like that some of them are going to need a longer one these two longer gables definitely need longer ones leave a gap above your slabs and put in two holes like that or if it's a shorter one leave a gap above your slab and put in one hole like that and then we've also got this big old white area now i think we can come to the center and we can come to the side twice i wonder whether or not that might be too far away might it so let's fill those in if we come to the center that's the middle i think we can come either side of that and build ourselves a double window just like that and we'll do that on both sides and the windows themselves i'm going to change up ever so slightly by putting in jungle trap doors so you've got a different feel with that circle than you have with the acacia and i just like the difference it makes also at the top we're going to use jungle trap doors again flap one in the bottom one in the top flap them down and do that on all of these gables including where you're just putting a single trap door and i'm also using the same jungle trap door in the tower windows we're then going to come to this end veranda area i'm going to put an andesite wall on both of those blocks you see i've put in the corner there we nicked out the corner the same stripped oak wood and then on top of that i'm going to place a fence there and there i'm then going to get campfires i'm going to place campfires all the way across here like that and across here like that and i'm going to place another one to the outside and another one to the outside there i can then place another wall on top of that and that gives me a full support on that i'll grab myself my shovel i'm just going to put these campfires out otherwise it's going to be smoke everywhere and that gives us a really nice looking veranda roof now if you want to you can split this up a little bit perhaps shove in a little bit of concrete every other one just to give it a different sort of feel it's entirely up to you on how you would like to do that i personally prefer it if you just put in the campfires because it just gives a bit more of a rustic look and just to close off this edge here, I'm gonna use some gates. And the good thing about gates when you go against walls, if you get this up down pattern, I really like the look of it. Now it's really starting to look fab now, I think. However, we've got a lot of bare wood here that is just long and straight and we need to sort that out. So on top of this slab here, I'm gonna place a composter. And then the level of that on here, I'm gonna place another composter on that. I'm gonna do the same on the other side and on all of the corners. And then on this one, again, you can see we've got one, two, three, and then a composter. So it makes sense to go one, two, three, and then a composter, which is directly above this shelf, which is great. Then one, two, three, and then a composter, which gives us two. We can then come across, put a composter at the level of each of those as well. And because we've got gaps of three in the middle, we can place ourselves some trap doors just to block that off again and give it a little bit more depth and a bit more different in color. So the house's struts are all now decorated up, but not a lot of the walls are. And this flagpole up the top here is really not doing anything. So I think I'm gonna just attach two blocks to that. I'm then gonna put a block on that one. I'm gonna bring a block underneath that and on there 
I'm gonna put a block there, there, and there, and then a block there, just to give a bit of a flag waving in the breeze. I quite like that crimson wood, it works quite well. We then need to just put more decorations around the walls, more decorations in the gaps, things like lamps, flowers in pots, and everything kind of around the outside to give the landscape a bit of a feel as well. So I'm just gonna do that and I'll be back when it's done. And I reckon we are done. But what is it gonna look like in an actual world, not this flat green concrete thing? I think it works pretty well. I can imagine making this area into an amazing base. That sounds like a great idea for a future video. Perhaps I'll do that and offer a world download of the completed area all finished. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you would like. But in the meantime, definitely send me pictures of your completed house. I'd be really interested to see it. Do it on Twitter, do it on Instagram, or do it in my Discord. Now I'd better leave you to go and start building this thing because it might take you a little while. And I'll look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.